Wait a minute! Rebecca! Is that you? You look like me! Wait, what? What the? Why am I? Oh no! Oh, come on, Rebecca! It was just a prank, woman! He was just a prank, my left cylinder! Come here! They must be trash around these parts. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Hello there, guys. It's me, Brad, back with another video. Now, today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Now, I'm going to be doing a train simulator review. Now, on my old channel, when it originally existed, I did do some train simulator reviews, but they didn't really work out too well since I was only a youngster back then. But I'm not anymore. And for this first review, we're gonna be checking out my first official purchase from the Bossman Games website. What is that locomotive, you may ask? Well. The Bossman Games Southern Railway Merchant Navy Class. So these are the Southern Railway Merchant Navy Class. Now, I didn't put every single engine down because one, I want my frame rate to survive, and two, some of the liveries are basically the same, it's just the numbering series are different. So, let's break it down. Starting off here, we have the first member of the class to be built, number 21C1, Channel Packet. I really like the flag on there, that looks very, very lovely. Now, as you can see here, Channel Packet is a bit of a, uh, um, no shot to say, a bit of a narrower front compared to the others. That I'll get into in a little bit. So this is Channel Packet in the Southern Railway Malachi Green livery. And I really like this paint job. And also, he even has the, uh, cast Southern Railway plates on there. And then you also have the number here, 21C1, which is very, very nice. Got the narrow cab window here. These were modified in the late 1950s, I believe. It was extremely narrow, the cab window here at the front. So, the engines were modified to have a wedge-shaped cab and improve the visibility a fair bit and even all the merchant navies are still around today with the 11 preserved members. Uh, they still have that wedge-shaped cab modification on. Well, at least the ones that have been restored, that is. Let me give you a view of the other side here. As you can see, it's a little darker because of the shadow, but this is channel packets in the Malachite Green, which is a very nice color. It's a very good color for a bullied Pacific. It really, really does look nice, especially with the green wheels. That looks very lovely. Now, next to it, we have another version of Channel Packet. This one is in the wartime black livery, because the Merchant Navies were introduced during the war. 
and in order to get the order through the works, they had to classify these as mixed traffic locomotives. It's basically the same. It's obvious. It's basically like a black reskin of the Melkite. Basically, it's like black everywhere, and then you have the black wheels, which all the bully Pacifics, the unrebuilt ones, have. I'll talk about a special project that's happening in a little bit. But this is channel. Ah, this is channel packets in the wartime black livery. As you can see, it's very different from... In both of these, Channel Packet was very different from the the other merchant navies, basically, because he had the cars placed on the front, and these were later swapped with patent numbers. So, for example, later on, Channel Packet was renumbered 21C... Channel Packet was renumbered 21C01, eventually. So, these cast plates here, these were removed, and he was eventually given a painted number, which is kind of neat. Right, these lads are the BR liveries, and we'll talk about this blue one over here at some point. Now, this is the BR Malachite Green, and it's basically like the, uh, Southern Green Channel Packet we looked at earlier, except it's actually got the BR number. Now this is the this is three o three five o three o. This is Elder Dempster lines, and this was the final member of the class to be built, and the third batch of merchant navies to be built, numbered three five o two one through three five o three o. They were not given the southern numbers. These were built during the days of BR, so they never received the southern numbers of 21C121. Oh, nope, that's not right. They never received the numbers of 21C21 through 21C30, so they never received their southern railway numbers, which is rather interesting. So this is the... Malachi Green BR livery. You can see here that the southern crest that Channel Packet has, you can see that's been removed. And it's got the BR number at the bottom there, which really, really looks nice. I really love how Bossman Games did these engines. Very lovely. And like the southern Malachi Green, you get the Malachi Green wheels on the BR Malachi Green. <laughs> As you can see, the number, the original 21C number has been replaced with the 35,000 at the front. And then this is the uh, BR Malachi Green Tender, which I think looks rather fancy. It's very fancy, it's very posh. Not really. <laughs> As you can see, the British Railways lettering is in the southern font. This was later changed for the crest during the early days of BR. Very lovely. Now this one is very striking. This is 35024 East as Oh god. I can't pronounce this. I've never been able to pronounce it. It's this is East as Attic Company. I'm pretty sure I butchered that, so I'm so sorry if I, that I pronounced that wrong. Anyway, this is 35024 in the BR Experimental Blue, with the red stripes. And bloody hell, this looks cool. Now, when I'm... Now, um... Oh god, how do I say this? Basically, um... When the merchandise were first being painted blue, 35024 was given this color with red stripes, but not a lot of people were a fan of it from what I heard. And so, the livery was changed for the Express Blue, which will, which is over there next to it, we'll look at that later. But I'm not gonna lie though, I really, really like this livery. It's just an absolutely beautiful looking colour. Blue really suits a locomotive, wouldn't you agree? Right, moving on from the Experimental Blue, we have the Express Blue livery. As you can see, we have number 35010, Blue Star who's one of the preserved members, and she looks amazing in this livery. Let me give you a quick pan of it, so you can see. Looks very, very, 
very nicely done, especially with the crest on the tender here. Looks very prototypical to the real thing. I really, really like how Bossman Gang has pulled off the BR Express blue livery. Very lovely. Right, now over here, this is the BR Brunswick Green livery. As you can see, we have number 35013, Blue Funnel. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this name at the bottom, so I'm just going to call it Blue Funnel. Mm, this, is the, this is the only livery that all of the unrebuilt bullied Pacifics are in, with the exception of the Lake Crest being on the tender. Now, the only bullied Pacifics that are not in this livery are... West Country 34023 Blackmore Vale, who's in the Southern Malachite Green. And then there's Battle of Britain 340892 Squadron, who's in the BR Malachite Green. So they are the only two Boy Pacifics not to be in the Brunswick Green livery. Which is very interesting. Now then. These are the Southern liveries. As you can see, we have preserved member 21C6, Peninsula and Oriental Asenko. I'm pretty sure I pronounced all that wrong. Now, as you can see, it, they're basically like Channel Packet we looked at earlier, but you can see that the, the smoke deflectors here, they're not bent inward like Channel Packet we saw earlier. They're more... They've, they're, they've straightened them out. And as you can see, we also have the... This disc on the front. I'm not really sure what this is called, actually. But as you can see, we have the uh, build date here. Easily, 1941. And looking at the engine, it, it actually looks very good. I really like the Malachi Green livery. And as you can see, we've got the painted Southern logo on the tender and the font. As you can see, we got the... Malachi green wheels like the BR Malachi green and then we have then We also have this Weird overplay here. I'm not really sure what that is to be honest I'm gonna have to look that up and here's a view of P&O from the back and here's a look at the other side now I haven't really mastered the Xbox Controller stuff for this yet, so I'm sorry if some of this is gonna be a little rushed and the final livery we have here is the Wartime Black livery. As you can see, we have engine 21C15. This is Rotterdam? Rotterdam Lloyd. I'm pretty sure that's not the way to pronounce it. As you can see, it's basically it's basically a black reskin of the Malachi green. The only obvious difference that I can spot is that the Southern Railway logo and number, if you look at the Southern one, you can see that these have a black background and the wartime black is a green background. So here's a view of Lloyd's bottom and here's a view from the other side. Now, some of these are basically the same. They're, some of these are like reskits of them. Like, what are you expecting from them? Something professional. I'm sorry, I'm only teasing. Right, now here we have another version of 35024. Now you're probably wondering, hold on, Brad, why is, why is the top of that dark turquoise color? I'm sorry, it had to be done. <laughs> I just had to make a Rebecca reskin from this. Now, the reason why I've done this, guys, is because... From what I've seen on the internet, now, I know what you're thinking when I say that. Have you been on the internet again? Yes, I have. <laughs> and I found this. From what I've seen online, I I'm really trying not to be rude here, but some of us have a tendency to confuse Rebecca for a merchant navy, and she's actually a West Country. Or a Battle of Britain, if that's your bag, but she's actually a West Country. But I've done this because some, well, basically, some, since some people confuse her for a merchant navy, so I thought I'd do this just to, just to please them. Now, as you can see, the wheels are still blue, and I did reskin the wheels. I made a 
copy of the uh, texture file for the wheels and then reskin them, but I'm not sure why, but I can't seem to get it to work. Like, it's like what, how you reskin a bogey in trains. You have to reskin that separately if you're making an engine with different colored wheels. And for some reason, I've looked everywhere in the uh, dub bin file for this engine, and I can't seem to find the right way to get the bogeys to change. So I'm gonna have to look into that. I mean, yes, it's not perfect. It's a bit of a bodge job in a few areas, especially the uh, headlight here. And if you look at the funnel, you can see some of the uh, stuff, some of the color bleeding into it. But I mean, you're not really gonna see it from the top, but the only visible thing you might see is the top headlight. Yeah, but you're not gonna see it that often. And yes, it it's not perfect, but I, I really don't care. I don't care. I couldn't care less. Now, as you can see, the back is completely yellow. And looking at the other side of our banana friend, it's basically the same. I think. Now, there's different tenders included with the Merchant Navies. The one I've given this is the 6,000 gallon tender. You get a 5,000 gallon, a 5,100 gallon, and a 6,000 gallon. Which is the one I fitted to Rebecca here. And so you do have a bit of customization between the tenders. So, uh, you're probably asking, Brad, is this going to be on our test run? As Victorion said to Optimus in Machinimus Prime Wars, unfortunately, no. Mostly because I'm pretty sure I don't want to anger any of the non Thomas fans. So, I'll take you over to our test train now. Right, so we're at our test train now. As you can see here, one of the things you need to get the consist- well, two of the things you need to get the quick drive consist to work. You need the Armstrong Powerhouse BR Mark 1 coaches. And then you also need these dudes from Steam Sound Supreme. This is the Pullman- oh god, these, these are Pullman coaches. But I can't remember the- pack that I got. I'll put it in, like, uh, subtitles here. Now, the engine we'll be driving for our test run is this! 35011 General Steam Navigation. Now, the reason we're going to be driving General Steam Navigation for our test train is because the dudes who own the real General Steam Navigation are actually going to put it back into this condition. Because none of of the merchant navies have survived in their rebuilt forms. All of them were rebuilt in the 1950s. So General Steam Navigation here will be the only merchant navy once his restoration is completed in around, I think, it might take another like 10 years, I think, for his overhaul to be done. Once General's finished being restored, he will be the only merchant navy in his as built condition. Now, I've put him in BR Green because I'm pretty sure when the real GNS is restored, he'll be put into this livery because all of the Bully Pacifics are in this color. Again, except for Blackmore Vale and 92 Squadron. Now, uh, let's get our passengers on board. Uh, brake mode, yeah, we'll get rid of that. So, let's bring up the F5 HUD. There's a ton of customizations for this thing, so if you press control, and then one through, I think, it's around. Yeah, if you press control one through six, you can basically give them a customized head code. As you can see, we have the, I think this is the Royal Train head code. And then if I remove these ones, these. It's kind of got like the little V for victory that Winston Churchill did when he did the pull the former Prime Minister's train. Which is which I think is very good, but we're gonna be sticking with the Express head code. Now there's a four actually before we do that, if you press control seven you get the red light. But if you don't get the you don't get the modern mainline headlights on these engines, which kind of sucks, but yeah, it's fine. I'll live. Now, you also get 40 headboards. So, we have Golden Arrow, Night Ferry, Atlantic Coast Express version 1, the Royal Wessex, 
it's not working. The Bournemouth Bell. The Pines Express. The Thanet Bell. The Man of Kent. The British Pullman. The Cathedral's Express. Torbay Express. Brittany Express. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. The Waterloo Sunset. The Devon Bell, which I really like because it has these little little plates here on the smoke deflectors of the locomotive. So yeah, you get the Devon Bell, the Kentish Bell. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. The the Can the Canada. I'm sorry if I butchered that. The United S the Statesman United States Lines. Holland American, Union Castle Express, the South American, Greek Line, Sigma Line. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. I think this one is Oriana, PO Orient Lines. I think that's how you say it. Pretty sure I butchered that. Cambria PO Orient Lines. Sorry if I butchered that. Names to Avon Express, Welsh Marches Express, Cumbrian Mountain Express, North Wales Coast Express, The Strong Countryman, The Solent and Sarum, sorry if I butchered that, Blackmore Vale Express, RLSB Orient Express, the Clan Line Headboard, the Scarborough Flyer, the Great Britain Headboard, Atlantic Coast Express V2, Bournemouth Bell V2, Devon Bell V2, the Royal Wessex V2, the Thanet Bell, I think we saw the other version of that, I can't remember. And that's it. That's all 40 headboards you get with this thing. So you know what? Let's go back a bit. Let's go back a little. Let's go for the... Uh, let's go for the Golden Arrow. That's that's a good one. Now, there's something else that I want to mention real quick. Specifically, about General's Flag. I think... I think the train's m version of General's they played might actually be wrong because if I bring up a photo of the trains general steam navigation nameplate you can see that the flag is completely different to the one of on the trains on the train simulator model and now I could possibly be misleading here I think the trains version of general's nameplate is wrong which I think is kind of hilarious in that regard <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that, that's kind of funny. Okay, so, uh, for this quick interruption scene, I I've swapped routes, and this time we're on the West Highland Line, and as you can see, we are in the snow, we have cloudy snow, which I might as well do, because over here in Canada, it is starting to show signs of snowing here. We have a wartime black merchant navy, one of the reserve members, 21C9, Shaw Saville, and I kind of gave a bit of misinformation on Channel Pack. He didn't really have the O in between the C and the 1, so my apologies. Now, I'm doing this interruption because I didn't really give you a good shot of the cab. So let's bring up the F5 HUD and have a look at the cab. And here it is! It, it actually, let's, uh, let's get the uh, good view. There we go, we can see the whole cab here. Let's, let's get rid of that, there we go. This cab looks very, very amazing. I really like how Steam Sound Supreme did this cab. As you can see, we've got, we've got a cup of tea here. Yeah, so if you get a little thirsty, you can just have a little, quick little sip of that as you're driving the engine along. And then we also have several things that can move. We have the driver's seat here. Fireman has a seat of his own. Oh my god! Holy moly!
Broadway. Oh my sweet jeez. Okay. So apparently if you keep the fireman seat up, auto fireman turns on. I did not know that. As you saw the fire doors open up. These are these have the steam operated fire doors. I tried to show that off when I originally did General's test run, but it wasn't really working. Maybe it'll, maybe they'll work now. Come on, let there be light. Actually, you know what? I can just open them myself. There you go. Let's get a close up of the fire. Oh god, that's a little bright. Oh, sorry, sorry if I hurt your eyes doing that. Yeah, this is. That's a nice glow in there. I'm not gonna lie. And I'm gonna cl close it now so the fireman can do his work. I did not know the fireman seat if you lift it up can turn auto fireman on. That is bloody awesome. I really, really like that. As you can see, we have cat. Do we have cat vents in this? I, I can't remember. Again, I've only just purchased these. But is that a cat vent? Oh, it is! We can open the cab roof! Look at that! We're gonna close it up. I'm just gonna keep the heat in. These sections here, these things, we can't mess around with. We've got a tender handbrake. Maybe which you can turn on and off. Which I'm gonna keep that off because usually the locomotive brakes work fine. We have our actual brake. We have our vacuum brake handle here. We can release that. And then you have this this little one here, the small ejector. You have to keep that on at all times with Bossman Games add-ons. And once it's pressurized at 20 inches, you have to make sure this stays at 20. You, you can basically keep it open if you want to. And then the reverser here. I, I do talk about it in the... Uh, test run with general but I'm gonna do it again here because unfortunately though the when I first did the test run the it was rather laggy let me let me, let me stop Savile here now uh the reverse here this this is one thing that I find a little strange with this sat on I, I'm not complaining about it. I love this thing to bits but I want to mention something real quick the reverser here so usually on a bossman games engine you press the W you go press the W or S key to go forward or backward. Forward. And then you have then you can press E to unlock the reverser and then you can wind it up to how much cutoffs you want to do. But on this you have to press E first and then you can press the W and S key to move it back and forth. Then you can let go of that, let go of E, and then it resets itself. And that is very interesting. I really like that. And now, sometimes, if you press it, I'm not sure if it's going to do it now, uh, maybe, maybe, just cut it off. There we go, sometimes if you release the E, it, it just stays there, and you have to press E again to lock it. So that's a, I think that's a bit of a glitch with it. So I'm not complaining, I love this locomotive to bits, but it, it's a bit of a, bit of a problem. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> oh man, oh god, I love this engine. Now let's check out the camera view. So we got the default view, we got this view, firebox view, this view, this view, this view, stick your head out view, the other stick your head out view, and back into the cab. I mean, it does look dirty in a few areas, but this cab looks bloody brilliant. Well, I'm just out of thoughts. Can these. Does this actually show? Oh yes, this actually. Hold on. Did I? Oh, I thought I saw a second one. Damn it! This actually shows on the. Uh, this is. This actually shows that it's open. Then if we close this, it closes that up. How awesome is that? Not, I think it. Does it do the same for the uh, cab windows. Let's close the driver's side. Hey, it does. Look at that. And then we can, we're gonna keep this open so we can stick our heads out. There we go. And then I think these are these these don't open up. 
looks much. We have our lights here. Uh, we have our gauge lights. Are these gauge lights? I think these are the gauge lights. Oh, reverse the lights! I can't see a light on. Oh! What the? Was I, were they talking about the tender? Hold on, let me have a couple of Savile from the coaches real quick. So, at least the brakes. Uh, he isn't forward. Blow the whistle! I already showed off the, uh, right, show off the whistles at the end of the, uh, recording here. Let's, uh, let's move Savile forward real quick. Do they? Oh god! Are they talking about the reverse lights on this? Because I can't see them! Hold on, uh, let me try that maybe, maybe that'll help. Does they turn them on? Nope! Wait, maybe they talk about- Are they talking about the front of the locomotive? Let's turn those on. Man, talk about the front of the engine. No, can't see them! Huh. Weird, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not doing something right. Anyway, I, I forgot to mention when I did the uh, stuff for general, you do have the reverse head coach, you need to press control shift, and then you can do one through six. Oh, damn it. There it goes, you can have the uh, reverse head codes up if you want to. Can I, actually, can I put a headboard on this? Nope. Nope, doesn't work like that, damn it. And, is there anything else that I, oh, wait a minute, hold oh, on, there's the, uh, Oh, that's the reverse scale lights. What lights are these? Gauge lights! Okay, so they're the middle ones. So if I press this... Okay, so the lights on the gauges turn off. I'm gonna keep those on so I can see them. There we go. Then we have the... Floodlights. What are those? Holy mother of God! Alright, so that turns off the lights in the cab! Is it neat? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that on, actually. Does it, does it show in the... In-game? Oh, it does! That's very cool! I like that! Right, uh, well, what else is there to show? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, let's open the firebox real quick so we can shove some coal in. And then there's also. What was, we have the. In basically, we have the injector valve. Here. Again. Turn these injectors on. Anti-clockwise to increase pressure. Okay. Then we can just... You can just turn these on if you wanted to. I don't think I should have turned this last one. <laughs> let's turn it off! Then we can just... Let's rotate these back. Turn these off. There we go. I have a tendency to fidget a fair bit. I'm sorry. What's this? Turbo generator isolate. <laughs> Oh god, I'm running- I'm rolling away! Hold on, let's couple back onto our coaches. No! 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 Don't- don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! Uh, stop! Oh, Jesus, that- Too fast, too fast, too fast! Bloody hell, you gotta be very careful opening the regulators on these locomotives. Specifically the steam engines, because they're not uh, as young as they used to. Yeah, there's one problem when you're in, like, different environments in the snow. The wheels have a tendency to slip, because that's a common problem with Bullied's locomotives. They had a tendency to slip a hell of a lot, especially when starting. From what I found is it's like the Thompson Pacifics, almost, because Thompson Pacifics, they had a tendency to slip when starting with a heavy train, but... Once they got out onto the main line, they had no trouble at all! So, basically... They, oh, there's something else that's worth mentioning real quick on these engines. Now, um, I did talk about it on G GNS, GSN, not GNS. I did talk about it on general, but I'll talk about it now on this, now that the footage isn't as laggy. Basically, if you open the regulator here, you can see that if you use the AD keys, you can see that the regulator moves very slowly as we start away with our train here. And the wheels slip when you're in the snow. Let me shut off steam real quick. There you go. 
Oh, it's always satisfying when a steel block of slips. Right, now, as you can see, now you can, you can do it the traditional way if you want. You can just click and drag it out to open it, but one thing that I found rather interesting is that if Shaw Saville can shut up! Thank you. What that I found interesting is that if you press shift A and D, the regulator opens a lot faster. And as you can see, we're slipping like crazy. Let me shut off steam here. There you go. As one promise, if you put different environments on, the wheels have a tendency to slip. That's a typical problem with bully specifics. They have a tendency to slip a hell of a lot. But if you press shift and A and D, the locomotive, the regulator of the engine, moves a lot faster. So, basically, if... Once we stop slipping here, yeah. basically, if you if you want to like open the regulator a lot faster, you just press shift, press A or press A, and then you can just leave the station. Well, start it up anyway. And then, oh god, we are slipping like crazy. And then if you press shift D, you can shut off steam, and then hopefully shutting steam off will also stop the locomotive's wheels from slipping. Like so. There's also something I want to also quickly mention about the uh, coaches here. These are the uh, Beyond Maroon coaches, but in the quick drive consist, they actually say that they're West Coast Railway coaches. But when you load up the engine of that you choose, as you can see, the engine I've loaded up is 21C9 Shaw Saville in the wartime black. You can see that the coaches are basically. Just in the plain BR Maroon livery. I mean, I'm not complaining, I don't mind it, but I guess if you wanted to like switch them out or something like that, you could you could possibly like reese I'm pretty sure, I swear I found on one website a reskin of these coaches in the West Coast Railway colours. I'm gonna have to try and find that again. But uh Yeah, that's a uh a close Detail of the the oh there's sand here yeah, um oh, sand is already on that's basically a cl a closer look at the merchant navy cab so anyway uh let's head back to the uh, test I was gonna do with general steam navigation I think it's time we take this bad boy out for a spin all right guys put on your game face let's do this. We can go a little faster here, General! Okay, this frame rate's not doing too great. Um, I'm gonna have to quickly do make some adjustments here. Hold on. Right, I made a quick clone of the review scenario, and I removed everybody except Rebecca and General. So, let's try that again! Uh, let's give General the Golden Arrow headboard, because that looks bloody brilliant. Control 1 and 3 for the head codes. Close that. Uh, release the brakes. Open the small injector just to make life easier. Right, departure. Round two. Okay, let's switch the points, because I forgot while we were leaving the station. There we go. Look at this! At full forward, and full throttle, you 
can actually get this thing to do a little less than 36 miles an hour. Which is bloody quick for a steam engine. But we gotta go faster. We need to get... Right, we're at 40 miles an hour now. I'm really, really looking forward for General Steam Navigation's restoration to be completed. Yes, it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of money, even though most money is being spent to on new build projects instead of restoration projects, but the General Steam Navigation's only group is kind of stuck in the middle. It's like in a new build slash restoration sandwich almost. Yes, they are restoring a old steam locomotive, but they're basically trying to create something new almost, if that makes sense. Right, we're already doing 60 miles an hour. Wow, there's even, there's even sparks flying out of General's funnel. We're slowly getting up to... We're at 61 miles an hour now. And we're slowly pushing it. It's taking a while, but we're pushing it. That, that just sounds so bad. POWER! So satisfying. Usually at around the, from what I've seen, usually at the 65 mile an hour mark, you start to accelerate a lot slower. This is actually very good. Actually, I'm gonna shut off steam now because I forgot to show you the whistles. So this is the usual space bar whistle. Actually, um, let's let's head to Rebecca real quick. There she is. Hello. Hello, love. Alright, uh, let me, let me show you the whistles these have. So this is the space bar whistle. Here we have the bell whistles. Or just one bell whistle, I feel like. Yeah, it's just one bell whistle. Here's the V whistle. And here's the tab whistle, which is the uh, signal approval whistle. Pretty basic, but pff, who cares? There's one problem with train simulators. Sometimes if you get off a moving train into an, and into another, when you get onto the non-moving train, uh, it stops. Well, the moving train, it stops, so... That's pretty much it for the, uh, Southern Merchant Navies. Would I recommend this pack? Well, if you're a fan of Rebecca, or if you're a fan of Bullied, or if you're a fan of Bullied Specifics, or you want to see a Merchant Navy in its original as-built form, this is the pack for you. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, and don't forget to comment and subscribe if you want to see more videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Later!